base car rolls off here as Nick Breeding in the 54 alongside Bradley Bishop Jr. in the 45 on the front row. Poopity fart shouldn't come. Poopity stoop fart. As the pace car rolls off here as Nick Breeding and Bradley Bishop Jr. on the front row. Breeding on pole position as we come to the green flag for round number six of the 2022 FBRL Hardy's National Series season. Through turn one, Nick Breeding immediately clears the 45 through one and two with Hannah Allen from third place looking for second as she races side by side with the 45 of Bishop. Kev Shear follows in behind and forth. Shade Eves, Colin, Kyle Collins falling in behind them as Nick Breeding leads the first lap of the night here in Nashville. Kev Shear making a move on Allen for the second place position here. And Allen with one of her best qualifying efforts of the season so far, looking to have a really good run tonight as the 94 team has not been performing very well, but Kev Shear, he's uh, not exactly had the best start to the season so far in the zero car, especially after what happened last week. Running in second place before getting involved in an accident with Diego Yepes and his own teammate Shade Eves. So Shear looking for redemption tonight here as he has now gone quite a bit of a gap to the third place car behind as he now sets his sight on Nick Breeding. Bow for 13th here as Tim Fiegel dives beneath the 44 of Sean Angel for the 13th place position here. And Tim Fiegel, who was uh, in the midst of a pretty good run last week, unfortunately got involved in an accident with Tyler Black on a hero exit debacle. But Fiegel right now, underneath the 44, trying to see if he can get a nice run here for the Sarah's Performance Auto Racing Team who are right now fighting to get into the top 30 in owner's points. But a nice pass on Shine Angel, who won last week at, Old, at uh, Wisconsin, excuse me. This is definitely a good look. Also, Doug Locker sitting in 15th. Pretty good start to the night for Gatlin Downey Incorporated here, as they're currently running in front of a couple of really good cars, including the points leader, Bobo Jones. I'd say a driver to keep an eye on tonight would have to be Toby Chris in the 64. In his debut Hardy's Natural Series race for Spartan Motorsports, he managed to get an 11th place finish after essentially surviving a lot of carnage after kind of almost getting involved in some carnage himself, but Christie really impressed a lot of people with that run at Wisconsin. And we'll see what he can do here on the Noble. Currently running in the 25th place position here. This 64 car has arguably been the best car Spartan has been putting together this season of the four cars that they're running. And they're not even have they don't even have a full-time driver in the car, but so far it's been probably the most impressive. And Christy trying to continue that trend here as he's battling with Ross Jackson, Nick Pericles, and Julio Caesar. Diego Yepes, who surprisingly did not have a very good qualifying effort this weekend. He is uh, trying to move his way up through the pack here as he tries to pass his teammate RJ Bishop for 16th here. Yep, as definitely uh, was a source of controversy last week after spinning Kev Shear into Shade Eves, which essentially knocked them both out of the top five and, and uh, didn't completely ruin Shade's day, but it definitely ruined Kev Shear's day, and you have to imagine that there's probably some some sore feelings towards the 77 team at the moment for CM Racing. As Yepes picks off another position here, he's gonna get past Patrick Smith. 77 seems to be the car moving forward right now. So we'll have to see, we'll have to keep an eye on the progress that this car makes. We are just past halfway into the, into the first green flag run of the night here. Corey Williams has managed to pass Kev Shear for the second place position. And you want to talk about a top three of guys who definitely need a really good run tonight. Nick Breeding, Corey Williams, and Kev Shear currently sit all outside the top ten in points. In cars that you would expect to be in championship contention. Now Breeding is a bit of a wild card compared to the other two, but Corey Williams, who is 
scored many of his many wins in the Hardys National Series. Then you also have the defending champion, Kev Shear. Those These two have, have had a really tough first quarter of the season so far, but tonight could be an opportunity here if they can basically have luck go their way or just have not have something bad happen to them or if you're in Corey Williams's case not have a bad pit strategy call I have to say a driver I was really expecting to make their way towards the front had had originally been Jack Halleck but so far this 74 team they have been struggling this weekend and I think a lot of, a lot of the team was hoping that whatever issues they had in qualifying were going to be fixed for the race, but so far that 74 car seems to be kind of stuck in the bottom half of the field, currently struggling against the 90 of Nick Pericles and the 42 of Dunn LaPrade. Alec has had some really solid runs the last couple of races, so you'd hate to see their momentum get cut off by a bad race like this, but still a long way to go tonight. Bow for fourth place here, Shade Eves gets a nice run through three and four on Bradley Bishop Jr. here. Shade Eves had a really strong car at Wisconsin last week, but unfortunately they pitted a little bit early. Actually, no, they pitted a little bit late, which put them back in third place, which unfortunately got them involved in the uh, Kev Shear and Diego Yepes incident, which cost them a chance at a win. So this three car has been pretty fast so far this season and as it stands he would actually take the points lead from Bobo Jones if he stays in the position he is now and Bobo stays in his position as well so this three car looks like they got a really fast car tonight as well. A little further to the back here Lilith Onyx and Austin Tyler getting into it. Onyx hits the back of the 47 multiple times. All for 39th place position, mind you. Lilith Onyx making her Hardy's National Series debut. Austin Tyler made his debut last week. It was actually kind of running pretty well, I think it's considered, until he got involved in an unlucky accident. But uh, Lilith Onyx definitely not making friends <laughs> to start off her Hardy's National Series career here. Hannah Allen, who qualified really well in third. We saw her get up to second place, passing Bradley Bishop Jr., but ever since those first five laps, this 94 car has just dropped. And within 25 laps, she has fallen from second to 18. So Hannah Allen really struggling here in the mid to late run as we are approaching green flag pit stops. Let's see if this 94 team can make a big swing at the setup because... I got a feeling they're just going to keep dropping it if they don't make a change soon. Side by side for 25th here is Ryan Reed and Julius Caesar battling here as Reed dies beneath the 74 of Jack Halleck. Oh man, Halleck. Oh, I don't think he saw that coming. Reed just dive bomb the corner. Somehow he made it stick. And he's going to take 23rd. So. I'm not sure Halleck will be thrilled about that one, but you can't fault Reed too much for a move that worked pretty well. So, uh, nice work by Ryan Reed. We're about to start the first green pipe pit cycle here. Corey Williams has caught the 54 of Nick Breeding. But Corey right now, he's kind of maintained this gap behind Breeding for the last couple of laps. So I think the 14 team, I think they're just biding their time. Not wanting to risk too much of a battle here right before the pit cycle. So we'll see how this pit cycle shakes out here. Hannah Allen comes to pit road. She's going to kick off the pit cycle here. And you can't be surprised because this 94 car, this car dropped from 2nd to 20th throughout the course of the run. So you gotta imagine they are desperate to fix whatever the problem is on this car. And get that car righted back in the right direction. Bow for a lead here. Corey Williams right before Green Flight Pit Stops is going to make a dive beneath the 54 of Nick Breeding for the lead. I guess I was incorrect. I was expecting Corey to just follow Nick into pit road, but it seems Corey wants to be the leader entering the pit cycle here. 
And Nick Breeding, who leads the first 32 laps of the night. He's going to have to give up to Corey Williams, and that 14 looks really strong. You have to imagine the 54 team. They're going to want to make a, a, uh, a late run adjustment here because it doesn't seem to be as strong as that 14, although he does make a good dive into turn three here and kind of gets a run here. Not sure. Breeding maybe just figured something out here, but here we go. Right back towards the lead. Breeding underneath the 14. Saying, nah, -uh, I, I want to lead the I want to be the leader for the pit cycle. But look at this. Corey, he's gonna take the outside and get a massive run off of turn two. And he's gonna back out of it. And Breeding reacts to him. And Breeding, he's gonna slide it to the grass off the access road. Can he get back on? He does, but that's going to cost him the lead and some time to Corey Williams as now Kevshear gets right next to him. Gatlin Downey is going to stay out an extra lap here in the 12 car. We're looking at roughly about two to two and a half seconds of tire fall off throughout the run. So Downey going to try and see if one extra lap will be the difference to get a better late run speed car. He comes to pit road. Toby Christie and Sebastian Kukulon also as well decide to stay out one extra lap. Oh, prom for James Elson, the 93. He blows up right off the exit of turn four. Ellison, the 93. That was a terrible time to have your engine blow as he's now going to be a little stuck here. Can he pull it off the track? No yellows being thrown. I think he's gonna get the car pulled off. No yellow is being thrown. 93 to pit lane. And that is a tough break for James Ellison. They were having a, a tough night and it just got a whole lot worse. We're being told of a problem with Aiden Shepard in the 86 car. Shepard came to pit lane, but he has not been released out of his pit stall. It has been two minutes since he entered pit lane. And they're trying to fix something with the 86 car. We're not quite sure what exactly it is. But man, this is a tough break for Aiden Shepard. Who has already had two last place finishes this season. And you also had missing Daytona. This 86 team, they have just not had a good season so far. And it just got even worse. Earlier we saw Hannah Allen kick off the pit cycle and her cycle is still going. She has been in pit lane for several minutes now as well as something must have gone terminal in the 94 or something major because they are trying to fix something within the engine. So tough break for Hannah Allen. A good start tonight but it just slowly got worse and they didn't even really make it to the halfway point. Lilith Onyx, she's being waved down, back down to pit lane. And I think she might be a problem. She looked like she might have been losing some speed on the back straightaway there. So Onyx coming down, back down pit lane. She just actually came out of it about a lap ago. And it's a stop and go here. I'm not sure what exactly they stopped for, but... She's going to come right back out of her stall. I'm not quite sure what to make of that one. Lilith Onyx, she's coming back down, she's came back on the track, but something I think is a, is wrong with that 21 car. She is really slow on the straightaways. And she's costing right butcher time, and oh my goodness gracious, Kyle Collins almost just had his life ended again right there. And Butcher still stuck behind the 21, and Butcher, oh, that was not very... Yeah, that was close. I'm not sure how to describe that one, but Lilith Onyx, anyways, she has got something really bad going on with that 21 car. We're being told it's a fuel pickup issue. And that might be the end of her night. Well, you gotta imagine Ryan Butcher is maybe not in the happiest moods. Butcher was running in 10th place before running into Lilith Onyx. So... Got some uh, time to make up here. But that 88 seems to be pretty fast. I don't think that slow up really hurt his car, but... Patience is definitely 
out the window for this 88 team. And they've got a pack of three cars in front of them. Oh, another car with a problem. Sebastian Kuklon in the 92. We're being told it's a tire problem again. Sebastian Kukulon, who on the last lap at Wisconsin had a tire failure while running in the top half of the field, has now had another tire failure at roughly the halfway point of the night. And that's going to put him off cycle. So he's going to have to rely on a lot of luck to get back in this. And for a team that is trying to get into the top 30 numbers points, this is real bad. Talk about someone who had a really bad uh, pit stop and pit cycle. Sean Angel has fallen all the way to 33rd or 32nd as he passes Julio Caesar. Not sure what exactly could have happened on pit lane for Angel to lose that much time, but Angel's definitely been put up a bind here. And as you can see, very far in the background, but not too far away, Corey Williams, the leader, is right behind him, so... Angel's got some real work to do if he wants to get a really good point stay here. We are just past halfway. Corey Williams has now caught the back of the field here. We have been caution free so far tonight despite all the sudden mechanical failures that has transpired over the last 20 laps. Williams now has caught the back of Austin Tyler in the Monster Energy Racing Dodge. And uh, right behind him, Kev Shear in the zero car running in second place. Nick Breeding, the pole sitter, has fallen to third, but still keeping in touch with the two cars in front of him. Aiden Shepard has now gone back on track, but he is multiple laps down. Bradley Bishop Jr. in the 45, running pretty much top five for the entirety of tonight. Looking for a really nice run here. That team needs some points. Luke Martin running in the top 10, which he has been doing for the last several races. This 22 team, they've been very consistent so far this season. However, you have to imagine Luke Martin after his truck series season last season. I think he's looking for some wins. But right now, this 22 team doing a good job. Shade Eves running in sixth place. Sebastian Kukulon has gone back out on track after his uh, tire problem. So he is going to be off cycle, but he does now have the fresh tires in the field as he's going to make a pass on Shade Eves. Quiet night for Noah Hart so far, running in 7th place, but in the top 10. Definitely has to be heartbroken, no pun intended, over what happened at Wisconsin last week. Kind of almost had that race in the bag until a mid-race engine failure. Diego Yepes has climbed his way into the top 10, currently running in 8th place, battling hard for 7th. Kyle Collins and Gatlin Downey battling for ninth place as these two cars round up the top 10. Meanwhile, back here in the 25th place position here, Ross Jackson trying to pass the 06 of TJ Smith here on the bottom lane. Jake West, who I don't think really had the best pit cycle here, lost several positions after running in the top 20 here. West comes down beneath the 11 here, makes contact with his teammate of Ross Jackson. Oh boy, that could have been bad. West moved down, Jackson kind of moved down as well, and West sort of forces his way through. Can't say I really blame him, that 16 looks a lot faster than the cars around him. As Jackson loses another position here, position here as Dewey Schramm gets past him. Speaking of Dewey Schramm, look at this. Schramm gets past Blaine Saylor here as he moves up into the 24th place position. Now maybe looking at a move on Jake West here. He makes a dive to the bottom here beneath the 16. Schramm right underneath the 16. Going to try to use the slower 35 of Doug Lockrow as a pick here. Look at Dewey Schramm go. He is moving forward here in this 08 car. And he is going to move into 22nd place here as he gets past Doug Lockrow. That was a nice set of passes by, Lo by uh, Dewey Schramm. Four laps ago, he was 28th. He is now 22nd. 
And Dewey Schramm, I mean, this 08 team for Easy Racing, this is a team that has been fighting their way into this race every single week so far this season. They've had to go through go, go or go home qualifying every time. And they've been running just outside the top 30, but tonight has been a very strong run for this team. And Dewey Schramm is really showing everybody why he was hired to drive this car. But right now, it is still a dogfight for 22nd place here. As Schramm has got some company. We are coming up on the final pit stops of the night here. Kev Shear is starting to slowly run down the 14 of Corey Williams. Shear seems to have a slightly stronger long run car in comparison to the 14. But Shear is going to have to contend with lap cars like Corey Williams is doing now as he's beneath the 81 of Major Robinson. Here we go, final pit stops of the night. Corey Williams, he saw the 86 car coming and that was perfect timing to come to pit lane. Williams did not want to risk getting passed by Shepard who had the fresher tires. And Corey Williams here got the lead on pit road, left with a pretty big gap, and they're gonna try and do the same here for him. This 14 team so far has been on point tonight. Here's the race off pit road here, Corey Williams. He's gonna get a pretty good run off of pit lane. And he is going to keep the lead here. And he has gained a pretty good gap on Kev Shear here in the zero car. So once again, the 14 team putting on a clinic on pit road. And they've given Corey Williams a really good position here to go to victory lane tonight. As the pit cycle ends, we're being told Sean Angel may have had something happen to him on pit lane here. So let's see what happens. Oh boy, Luke Martin comes out next to the 44, and they make contact. And you can see the damage next to the 10 car. Sean Angel got a piece, and now they're gonna have to fix that left side. And all that time Angel made up on that run after a very bad first pit stop. That is going to most definitely go away. They're going to have to repair this 44. Tough night for the Wisconsin winner. Shade Eves and Bradley Bishop Jr. After the end of the pit cycle, they have caught Nick Breeding here for third place. Eves and Bishop have been running some of the fastest laps on track these past couple of laps. And now they have caught Nick Breeding. So we'll see if Brittany can hold these two off, but that 54 kind of seemed to struggle as that first run went on. And during that second run was not able to keep up the same pace as the 14 and the zero. That's Shade Eves here. Look at the run, he gets off at turn two. That three really powered through turns two really well as Nick Breeding, he's now got a fistful of Shade Eves next to him. Eves on the bottom lane here, trying to make the pass for third place. I think he's going to get it here. Breen is going to do what he can to fight back. Breen takes a very wide arc to the corner to make this turn two runoff. We've seen this a couple of times tonight. Here comes Breen underneath. He gets the run into turns three and four. He dives into the corner. Brittany makes a very bold move into the corner. Eves around the outside, breeding a little bit slow off the exit. Traded a very fast entry for a slow exit, and Eves, I think, is going to clear him. No, breeding and gets back underneath again. But who just can't get there. Breeding gets a little bit tight off the exit of two, and that's going to cost him third. And now he's got Bradley Bishop Jr. all over him. 15 laps to go for Corey Williams, who has amassed a pretty decent gap between him and second place here. And he is cutting through these lap cars like it is nothing. Coming up on Dewey Schramm here, who is currently running in 26th. He is going to get put one lap down by Corey Williams. But the gap is up to basically five seconds here. And unless things get pretty ugly, Corey Williams has got a very manageable gap here. 
10 laps to go here. Kev Shear, he is starting to get ran down by his teammate. We just saw Shade Eves get third place from Nick Breeding. And now he is running down his teammate, Kev Shear. And Shear's kind of bit in a bit of a pickle. It is now Julio Caesar who is a lap down. He is trying to fight Shear. And I can't imagine Shear's too happy about that one. Six laps to go here. Shade Eves has caught his teammate. And look at how well that three car gets off at turn two. That car is turning really well on exit. And Shear, I don't think he's going to have much of a fight for his teammate here. And luckily for these two, Diego Yepes is nowhere near them. So I think they should be able to get through this battle pretty cleanly here. Sebastian Kukulon, who is on the off cycle due to his tire problem earlier, he is going to probably play a factor into this, but it's going to help Eves for the moment here. Is now Caesar again beneath the zero, trying to somehow get past him, but kind of kind of a losing battle there. Less than five to go here. Here's the battle for 15th. Ryan Reed is battling Gatlin Downey for the spot with Tyler Black right there in front of him as well for 14th. A really nice run for Ryan Reed tonight. This Texas Motorsports team, they uh, managed to get a, a little pra extra practice together as they got some testing a couple of weeks ago. Testing that wasn't exactly sanctioned by FBRL, but it was extra time on track that this team most definitely needed, and so far, it seems to be helping them out here. Ryan Reed trying to get a top 15 finish for, for Texan Motorsports here, who are desperate to try and get some good finishes here as the season goes on. Meanwhile, Corey Williams has passed Tim Fiegel, the 21st place car, meaning that Corey Williams has managed to put the entire second half of the field one lap down. And he's going to come to the white flag this time. What a night for Corey Williams in this 14 team. After what has been a very difficult first five races of the season, Williams is on point to a very dominant victory, a statement victory even. This 14 team was expected to compete for the title this season and through these first five races you wouldn't believe it but with half a lap to go here Corey Williams looking for yet another intermediate series intermediate racetrack victory here in the Hardy's National Series he's going to come to through turns three and four Corey Williams and Curtis Racing are going to go to victory lane for the first time this season Corey Williams wins at Nashville Super Speedway A massive win for the 14 team, a very much needed win. And this 14 team, I think they're back and they're ready to compete for a championship. Shady Eves finishes second place after a really strong run tonight and is most definitely going to take the points lead, I would assume, with his run tonight. Kev Shear finishes third place, a much needed vic uh, finish for that team as well after what's happened the last couple of weeks. Bishop Jr. finishes fourth, Breeding fifth, Yepes sixth, Collins 7th, Hart 8th, Luke Martin and Bobo, Bobo Jones round out the top 10, finishing 9th and 10th. 